today I will teach you how to dance. So macam, semua orang terfinger-finger tau. Like, what do you mean? You are supposed to be talking. No, no, no. I, I will give a speech, but I will teach you how to dance. So macam, uh, and bila your first line kan, buat orang senyum, buat orang gelak, atau buat orang macam, you akan automatic gain confidence tau. Macam, there's only one way up from here. And that's to victory, macam tu lah. Alright, so macam tu. The higher level of uh, curing this starting problem is by that. You know, assessing the situation apa semua. But I understand, yang benda ni sangat susah, betul tak? Like, uh, kecuali you have a lot of experience sebab I've been debating for six, seven years pun baru I macam reti sikit kan. So kalau you baru nak start in public speaking, presentation apa semua, there's always a few methods that you can use. Macam I, bila I bagi tahu junior-junior I, waktu I train orang, first you can always use uh, a predetermined ataupun pre-written sentence. Contohnya macam Shazran kan, waktu dia awal-awal masuk tempat dia macam walu-walu uh, sikit kan. I cakap je, you guna je satu ayat ni. Macam in English debating, biasanya ada yang akan cakap, in the darkness of the night, the government turns on the light. So macam, okay, at least ada something before you cakap Assalamualaikum. And then, from there you can just uh, modify and diversify lah your ayat. But uh, on a higher level, your opening line ni should be ada kaitan dengan you punya content. So that is easier for you to transition. Contohnya kan, uh, hari ni you nak bagi speech pasal poverty and everything kan. Masa poverty and kemusnahan kerajaan macam tu. So your opening line must also have some sort of connection dengan your full topic of speech. For example, uh, panel, Today we are shackled by a problem. This problem is blah 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 blah. Okay, this problem is uh, humans do not have enough capital to live. Humans does not have enough resource to live. Blah 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 blah. And today my speech is going to be about poverty. So now your opening line dah gempak lah sebab you macam very strong. But then your opening line also have a connection with your speech. Okay, so that's like the tips lah. So contoh kalau you nak bagi speech presentation pasal agama, you bagilah ayat opening ni ada kaitan dengan agama kan. Macam Shazran cakap, janganlah you punya speech pasal agama, tiba-tiba your opening line, donut Krispy Kreme lebih sedap daripada Dunkin Donuts. Then what what people people can't relate, right? Like, what what are you supposed to talk about? Tapi kalau contoh awak buka macam kun faya kun, apa yang nak, apa, apa bila nak jadi, jadilah ia. Maka terjadilah juga presentation saya pada hari ini. Ya, macam tu lah. Like, that's like how you start. You just find a good one-liner, and then make sure one line tu connect dengan your speech and afterwards it will be easier you will gain your confidence i think i think that's it all right all right thank you hakimi for the sharing so sekarang uh, this is the last question before we go to q and a daripada semua participant ni soalan daripada organizers sendiri which is um, so the biggest problem most students face when presenting is looking at their slide or card instead of the audience sebab yalah kita take note kan kita nak cakap apa kan so bila present tu we rely on that card too much sampai kadang-kadang tak bagi eye contact pun dekat audience so instead of reading macam mana kita nak biasakan diri kita untuk tengok audience so tak terlalu rely on kita punya cards or note tu so I think Shazran will be nice untuk jawab benda ni sebab dia dah presenting dekat orang-orang besar ni okay, Thank you Inisa So first of all, uh, bila kita cakap pasal orang yang selalu tengok macam cue card ataupun tengok script dia dengan macam mana kita nak uh, apa eye contact kita dekat audience. First of all, dia boleh jadi sama ada speaker tu dia lupa dekat points yang dia nak cakap ataupun yang keduanya dia pandang dekat card sebab dia takut dengan audience bila dia tengok ada satu audience ni geleng-geleng dekat dia ada satu audience ni macam oh maki-maki apalah apalah kan so mungkin itu possibility untuk dia tengok card tapi untuk speaker yang professional untuk kita nak upkan delivery kita supposedly kita patut firstly practice kita, kita punya delivery maybe few hours ataupun days before kita nak deliver ataupun present sesuatu perkara So by doing that so, kita akan dalam uh, fikiran kita, dalam kepala fikiran kita, kita akan ada satu flow yang automatically kita akan ingat, oh first uh, first isi kita pasal ni, uh, isi kedua kita pasal ni dan kita punya closing macam ni, itu yang first. 
Yang kedua pula, mungkin saya boleh suggestkan untuk uh, kita panggil dulu kawan-kawan kita, kita masuk dalam satu room, kita cuba present dulu. Kita present kalau ada kekurangan ke ataupun ada yang lag, kita boleh improve supaya on the presentation day, kita boleh fluent. Sebab of course, most of the audience ataupun yang kita punya uh, penonton tu, dia nak kita rasa dekat dengan dia. Dia tak nak kita ni access speaker terlampau tak sub ataupun terlampau macam attach dengan script ataupun uh, cue card yang kita buat kan. Of course, macam kita access speaker pun faham benda tu. So, uh, nak tak nak, uh, perlu dan pentingnya it is very crucial for us in terms and in order for us to be a very fluent and professional speaker to prepare our speech to always ulang-ulang and ulang sampai hari event setiap point satu pun the whole script yang kita nak cakap so that kadang-kadang bila kita uh, selalu ulang the repetition macam Iman cakap benda tu kena ada repetition if kita selalu repeat 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 uh, of course kita akan senang untuk ingat sama lah macam kalau kita nak baca Al-Quran ke, kalau kita nak jawab exam, kita kena study tu bukan sekali scan, uh, dah ingat terus jawab. Tapi kita perlu uh, ulang banyak kali, ulang banyak kali supaya bila dah masuk dalam exam hall, kita senang. The concept is just the same. Kita perlu repeat and repeat and repeat. Uh, that's it all. That is all. Thank you. Okay, thank you Shazrai. So sekarang kita akan tanya soalan daripada participant pula. So this question is from Yusuf Aziz bin Sulaiman. The question is, does fluent in speaking as matter when talking in front of people? So I think Aina can answer this question. Does being fluent is very important when talking in front of people ataupun fluent to come second? First, come confident. Atau macam mana? Apa opinion Aina tentang soalan ni? Okay, uh, thank you for asking that question. I think this is very interesting. But for, in my opinion, personally, I think that fluency and confidence both are at, no, confidence comes first, but fluency comes at the second level. Because when, even if you are fluent in speaking, whether in Bahasa Melayu or English or your mother tongue language, even if you are fluent, but you are not confident, then your delivery would also not be as good because anyone can speak honestly like you can talk to your friends you can talk to uh, your family right you can talk to anyone but if you are nervous if you don't have the confidence then your fluency will not help you in the situation because speaking in front of others is not the same as uh, when you speak with your friends right confidence is as i said i think is more prime is more important and crucial than your fluency but of course they come in a package. If you are confident, but you are not fluent, then it would also do you no good. Confidence would probably help to attract your audience for a short period of time, but towards the end, they would probably not focus anymore because um, of the fluency, the lack of fluency. Because you probably get stuck in between your speech or your speech would probably be derailed to other topics because when you're not fluent, when you're not fluent, you'd probably be out of topic. And at some point, you might not even know what you're talking about. So at that point, you will lose the engagement with the audience. So at that point, the confidence will not help you anymore because at that time, the audience will just think that, oh, what is this guy talking about? Or what is this person talking about? They can't even connect or relate to us anymore. So at the end of the day, whatever presentation or speeches, what the audience really want, is to connect with this. As Shazran mentioned earlier, as all of the panels mentioned earlier, they do not want to have a barrier between a speaker and the audience. They just want to relate. They want to see how you see the world. They want to know what is your perspective. So from there, um, I can conclude that of course, it comes in a package. So work on both. Confidence comes from uh, your vast experiences and learning from mistakes. And fluency definitely comes from practice. You can watch videos, practice, 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 like Bara said, until it's perfect. As the Chinese proverb says, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. So you've already taken your first step today by coming to this event. 
So no worries guys, it is not a short journey. I myself started when I was in primary school, but trust me, the journey is very rewarding and trust the process as far as it. Thank you, Nisa. All right, thank you. So I want to ask the same question to Farah too. So I'll answer that everybody use of Aziz study. Does fluency matter when talking to people? So Farah, apa opinion Farah dekat ni? Ataupun macam mana? I would 100% um, agree on Aina. Actually, all the points that Aina cakap, I dah terfikir dalam otak I. Because yes, it's true. Confidence comes first and then baru fluency because you need the confidence to speak in front of people. Macam fluency, you, okay, you you read, you talk, you cakap sangat macam bila you practice sendiri, you cakap lancar je. Tapi ni tiba-tiba, once time you tengah present, and then you don't have the confidence to do that, you macam you pandang orang je, you terus macam, oh, I tak boleh, I, I tak boleh, I tak boleh. Jadi macam, yes, confidence is memang the top, memang the top priority lah. But one of the ways for you to boost your confidence is, Practice a lot. Yes, we keep on stressing practice, practice, and then practice comes in many, many ways. You can practice with your friends, like Shazran said. You can practice in front of your class by volunteering yourself um, to present on those things. Macam contohnya, Madam tanya, uh, cuba you jawab soalan ni. Jangan senyap. You have to cakap. Tak kisah jawapan salah ke, pernah tak you macam kawan you cakap and then jawapan dia macam merepek. Tapi, dia confident sebab dia macam, uh, dia confident dengan jawapan dia betul. Jadi you check out. So that's why confidence is penting. And then another thing, you can also talk to your cat. You can also talk to any of your, <laughs> you can talk to your plushies and uh, at, macam at home kan. Macam contohnya, you, your friend busy ke ataupun, uh, you know, you don't have anyone to talk to. You can use many, many ways. And the most important thing is, yelah, you have to talk to yourself. That's one of the thing yang boleh boost your confidence lah. So for me, confidence is very important and then there, there then comes fluency and then by fluency pula, how you improve your fluency, you have to read a lot, you have to make sure that why do you, so why do you have to read a lot? You have to macam campur, uh, you have to add on the, apa tu? You have to add on the things that's inside your, your head lah. Tengok, I pun cakap macam tak fluent sangat kan. <laughs> Jadi macam, tapi I confident je bila I cakap. So, so you have to baca banyak in order. So macam tadi, you, you dengar Aina ada cakap, uh, you, dia ada bagi from a Chinese proverb and then Ilman tadi ada cakap from, uh, Ilman cakap Shakespeare eh tadi. I pun lupa lah, I bukan Shakespeare. But you know, he, he has those things. Oh, Plato. Okay, <laughs> he quoted from Plato. So, um, so macam mana you boleh gain all those things is by reading a lot, by adding a lot of things inside your head. And then macam bila you baca pun, it doesn't have to be reading factual things. If you know that you're not, you're not keen, macam you tak minat sangat baca uh, news or you don't, you tak minat sangat baca pasal politics, it's okay. We're not forcing you to read politics every day. You can just, you can read like, um, uh, you can read pasal, even you read novels pun dah okay. Zai pasal tu, you dah boleh add on vocabulary. And then one more thing to uh, apa, improve your fluency is you have to read aloud. So usually when you read your novel, or you, maybe you read your textbook like tu paling that's the closest thing that's to us lah because we read our textbook every day. So instead of you baca dalam hati you and then you baca dalam your minda kan, why don't you just speak out? You cakap je macam, uh, you, walaupun soalan macam ayat tu, um, they explain about like this one fakta. So instead of you reading it inside your heart and bagi you sendiri didengar, baik you macam cerita, you cakap read aloud and then you cakap suara-suara dan daripada situ, dia boleh macam terus, because I have read this one article when they say when you read aloud, dia terus masuk dalam otak you, you know something like that but I'm not sure where uh, betul ke tak fakta tu but I rasa macam benda tu betul lah so you just <laughs> See, I'm I confident jah for I talk up me. So that's why you need to have that confidence in yourself. Oh, okay. I guess Nisa hilang ke? No, uh, my internet connection okay. is a bit okay. so I'm okay. still listening. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> so I think that's uh that's my opinion. Like confidence comes first, and then later on um baru your fluency. But macam Aina kata, it comes with a package. So bila you tengah nak betulkan you nak improve your confidence level, you should also tengok juga your fluency. You tak boleh uh, focus on confidence je. You patut fluency je macam ah, nanti, nanti, nanti lah. I tengok tak, you should do it together. But when it comes to like reality, confidence comes first lah. Alright, thank you Farah. Uh, I think dah lah lang Farah cakap ni, there is another question from Izati Hanani. The question is how to improve presentation skill and delivery technique. 
Oh, Farah is a very confident person. So macam mana in day to day you improve your skills tu? Apa yang you buat? Siapa yang encourage you? Who guides you? Uh, something like that? Alright, so um, how do we improve is by, uh, macam Aina ada cakap tadi, you, you listen to TED Talks, dia tengok Oprah Winfrey semua. So as for me, I pun buat benda yang sama. I, one of the, one of the thing that sparked me lah to talk in front of people to macam suka uh, cakap depan orang semua is because I tengok Oprah Winfrey lah, I tengok Ellen DeGeneres, if you tengok Ellen DeGeneres punya show pun, and then sampai at one point, I rasa macam I want to have my own talk show. Yeah, so one, so jadi macam, jadi after that, uh, but that was, those were the days where you ada your talk show semua tu lah. But now, if you tengok dekat Spotify, you dah ada podcast. Uh, kat podcast tu, you have TED Talks. Jadi macam, you have to rajinkan diri dengar. So like sometimes instead of you listening to songs, you should, you could also listen to podcast. So daripada situ, uh, you boleh learn how, how do they talk the way the skills then the presentation skills that they get on what are the points yang dia cakap so all these things yang you dapat you you terapkan kepada you, you macam you practice then and then one of the two podcasts that i minat sangat dengar is you should try to listen to the Aida Azlin show i like the way she talks she's so calming and then bila you dengar even though nanti you akan dengar suara dia macam slow tau but Tak ngantuk. Bila I dengar benda tak, I macam mm, best ni. Because all her facts are very straightforward. And then the way she talks, the way she uh, communicate with the uh, guest pun macam best jugalah. So that's one podcast that you can listen to. And then you should also listen to TED Talks. Dia ada this one podcast on Netflix. Eh, Netflix pula. On Spotify jugalah. Dia ada memang satu podcast tu um, based on TED Talks. So TED Talks kan, the best thing about TED Talks is it's not that long. It's just like seven minutes or eight minutes you talk about that one particular topic. So instead of you macam uh, tak buat apa-apa, macam sambil you macam tengah, pan, uh, tengah relax ke, try dengar TED Talk. Lepas itu you boleh gain some knowledge on how to present well. Semua tu. So I think it's basically um, <clears throat> you have to surround yourself with the uh, you have to surround yourself the, with the things and maybe you you kena ada perasaan yang you nak belajar. So bila you dengar benda tu, you rasa macam oh you need to improve yourself. That's why you kena buat those things. And then never rasa macam you are good enough. Always challenge yourself. If you rasa macam okay, I dah sampai this one point. So uh, dah lah, dah settle lah hidup I dah complete. No, never do that. You should always, so you dah sampai that level. So what should you do next? You tak boleh turun dah. You should always climb up the ladder. You cannot just duduk kat bawah je. You tak boleh duduk kat satu level je. So sometimes you have to get up from your comfort zone. So by doing that, you need a lot of experience. You need a lot of, um, yeah, you need to listen to people punya experience pun bagus juga so that you can stay motivated. I think that, uh, did, did that answer the question? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you, Farah. Right. That's a very good tips actually. So we have another question from Siti Akilah binti Razali. So the question is, what made you to be a confident person? So macam mana nak jawab soalan ni? So I think I nak Ilman yang jawab. So Ilman, I think everyone see you as a very confident, competent, excellent person. So how do you, you know macam mana you be that confident, you be that confident person ataupun you tak rasa pun you confident sebenarnya? Okay, uh, thank you Nisa and thank you Siti Akila for the question. So, how to be a confident person? Sebenarnya, uh, macam yang Syazuran cakap, macam yang Aina cakap, dia perlu ada baby steps and kita kena ada confidence. So, dia kena start slow-slow lah macam masa saya sekolah dulu, macam mana kita develop ourselves untuk jadi confidence adalah dengan kita achieve something. So macam contohlah kalau kita macam kalau saya dulu pergi tournament uh, debat lepas tu saya menang satu tournament ni uh, masa my first try. So dari situ lah kita rasa macam oh kita sebenarnya boleh je uh, untuk bercakap depan orang. And uh, cuba untuk buat tu dalam small circle dulu. Contohnya macam kita mungkin ada kawan yang 4-5 orang. So lepas tu kita cuba untuk beranikan diri kita, kita present depan orang. Uh, so untuk memastikan kita boleh uh, untuk present the idea kita mestilah kena ada idea tu dulu kan. So, uh, my tips is, first, kita kena banyakkan membaca lah. Sebab bila kita banyak membaca, kita ada knowledge. So, bila kita ada knowledge, then kita boleh present lah our knowledge kepada orang lain. 
So itu sebenarnya uh, the way macam mana kita nak jadikan diri kita confident. Yang kedua, bila kita dah bercakap depan orang, so kita try untuk dapatkan dia orang punya feedback. So untuk feedback ni mungkinlah dia orang tak akan bagi tahu direct. So macam apa yang Farah cakap tadi, bila kita tengah cakap, kita dengar eh, kita nampak orang tu angguk ke, geling ke, uh, itu adalah satu some sort of feedback juga yang kita boleh terima. So kalau kita nampak macam orang tu macam ngantuk ke masih speech kita bosan lah ataupun mungkin orang tak grab kita, uh, kita punya uh, percakapan and kita punya talk. So apa yang boleh kita uh, apa yang boleh kita buat adalah untuk memastikan uh, pertama kita kena betulkan balik kita punya delivery lah. So untuk memastikan kita ada fluency dalam delivery tu kita kena uh, kurangkan fellas. So fellas ni macam kita ah uh, um ah uh, setelah uh, dalam dalam kita bercakap. So untuk kurangkan benda tu contoh ada 100 ah uh, dalam satu word ah uh, dalam satu ayat lah kan ada 100 perkataan. So cuba untuk pause bila kita bercakap 5 ayat 5 ayat 5 ayat. So bila kita pause kat situ, kita tarik nafas dulu, kita cakap deng- dengan baik dengan orang. So daripada situ bila orang boleh catch up apa yang kita cakap, so dari situ kita boleh dapat positive feedback daripada orang. So bila kita dapat positive feedback daripada orang, dari situlah kita gain our confidence. And uh, last tips adalah cara kita nak gain confidence adalah kita kena be different daripada orang lain. So different ni adalah mungkin boleh masa introduction kita bagi uh, apa macam apa yang Abel cakap tadi kan, ada one liner kan yang kita boleh cakap dan orang akan macam wow baguslah dia ni. Uh, so itu adalah salah satu cara untuk kita jadi confidence. Yang kedua adalah untuk kita dengar sebab uh, menjadi good public speaker bukan hanya just kita boleh bercakap dan sepatutnya bercakap tetapi kita kena juga mendengar sebab bila kita dengar kita faham behavior orang and bila kita faham behavior orang kita tahu kita punya audience kita tahulah macam mana kita nak sampaikan that ideas kepada audience so audience ni kan berbeza-beza kan ada yang mungkin warga emas ada yang orang muda ada yang pelajar sekolah dan sebagainya so kita kena tahulah Contoh kalau kita cakap pasal politik dekat uh, budak-budak kecil, mesti ada orang tak faham. So kena sesuaikan kita punya topik tu dengan kita punya audience. So dari situlah bila kita sesuaikan mungkin dari cara kita bercakap, kita punya ideas dan sebagainya, dari situ kita boleh untuk gain confidence sebab orang dah bagi positive feedback daripada kita. And bila kita dengar, kita faham, kita terjemahkan dalam kita punya tindakan which is kita bercakap sesuai dengan kita punya audience dan sebagainya. So I think before I end, I ada quotes daripada Bill Gates which is as we look ahead into next century, leaders will be those who empower others. So untuk empower others, kita kena confidence. So untuk confidence, kita kena mahir dalam public speaking. So I wish you guys all the best and make sure upgrade your delivery. That's all from me. Thank you. All right. Thank you juga for those tips and on how to be a confident person. So, uh, kalau tengok dekat chat, we have additional question from Zarif Daniel untuk Abel. The panelists boleh tengok juga eh, dekat chat tu, dia tanya untuk Abel, question ni, how has your profici- uh, proficiency in your speaking and soft skill affected your internship experience, whether it be from an employability perspective or how it has influenced your position in your current place of work? Abi boleh baca question tu dekat chat? Okay, okay boleh. Alright, thank you Zarif. Uh, interesting question. I think uh, most of us in this discussion are heading towards our internship probably next semester or in a year or so, right? So, how has proficiency in speaking and soft skills has affected my internship experience? Uh, to be frank, it has been very instrumental in helping me Eh, jauh, 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 cakap Inggeris lagi. Tak, dia sangat penting dalam, sorry, sebab soalan dalam Inggeris kan. Alright, so, dalam pengalaman saya, uh, ianya sangat banyak membantu dalam uh, experience saya dalam sebagai seorang intern lah. Perlu ni bahasa. Okay, so, firstly, saya di-assign sebagai seorang intern di finance department sebab saya pun bachelor in finance kan. Tapi, uh, during my phone call, interview phone call with my supervisor, She said that I, dia call uh, banyak company sekarang, dia memang call mengejut je. Sebab intern, number one, kita just intern, right? So, kita apply, so dia orang akan call. It's not like too big of a position, kan? Number two, is that dia memang company sangat pentingkan speaking skills tau. 
So banyak je company sekarang, dia akan direct call and then ask you interview questions on the spot. Sebab dia nak tahu how you react towards, you know, sudden punya uh, urgency ataupun sudden punya fear. Like, macam in my case, I was actually sleeping actually, waktu tu petang. So, dia call, saya bangun. Hello, Assalamualaikum. Then, hello, this is Shasha from Live In. I'm calling you regarding your internship placement. So, I macam, siapa je yang tak terkejut kan? I tengah mimpi kot lagi waktu tu. But, uh, since uh, I'm used to talk uh, to talking, I was able to, I think, okay, did okay lah in the interview. So, when I first entered my company, it is a startup. So, macam dia tak banyak organizational punya hierarchy. So, macam uh, tempat I kerja sekarang, I duduk depan supervisor I, belakang I CEO, tepi tu CFO, so macam it's very flexible kan. So sama lah bila I masuk, uh, my supervisor cakap, uh, bila I call, it's, you you can actually speak very well. So my first day at office, dia cakap, okay, ni list of intern yang hantar resume dekat I, you pilih, you call seorang, you try interview. So I macam, serious lah, I intern kot, takkan intern, interview intern kan. Uh, and then, Questions tu kita tak ada fix question tau to ask. Macam dia cakap just call and ask question based on the resume, ask what you want to ask and then evaluate on yourself. Adakah intern ni layak untuk bekerja dengan you? So that's what I did. So firstly dia akan pilih resume and then dia akan bagi I. And then uh, I tak tahulah dia kira I di taken advantage of ke. I rasa I dah di taken advantage of lah kot. Sebab sekarang Uh, semua uh, job thing ke, LinkedIn company ke, apa ke, semua email tu link ke email I. So every day I receive around 10, 15 resume just waiting to be interviewed. So macam every day I akan call this intern. Alright, and I interview. So personally, last week, um, hari Kamis, empat orang intern baru. Semua ni I yang pilih. So for sampai sekarang ada 11 orang kot intern yang I ambil. And yang best je, semua orang ni panggil I Mr. Hakimi lah, Encik Hakimi kan. Tapi I sebenarnya intern. And some of this intern umur 25 tau, yang ambil diploma dulu kan. I paling muda dalam office tu, 22 years old. So how has it affected uh, my internship? Uh, very much so. Sebab uh, it's very important now, especially kita orang, we deal with a lot of foreigners. Our company has a branch in Thailand. Our service is mainly being used by foreigners as well. So we need people who can talk in English and also talk very, uh, you know, very lancar lah. So even uh, that's the first thing. And bila you uh, boleh buat something additional. For example, Zarif, I know you take accounting, right? So you can do accounting work. But at the same time, you can also speak very clearly and fluently. Then maybe your supervisor can say, all right, how about next time you pergi jumpa client juga? Instead of just photocopying documents, apa semua kan? So it can very much expand your work scope and job horizon. So sekarang, you bukan setakat do your accounting job, but you can also do HR work. And you learn a lot lah. Macam I banyak I learn. I uh, belajar macam mana nak buat claims apa semua. And in fact, sekarang I dah masuk stage yang before permanent staff kita ambil, kita HR department akan interview before di interview oleh department yang diorang headed kan. So sekarang I even interview these permanent workers walaupun I seorang intern. So macam uh, it's a good learning curve lah. Dia macam bila you ada the capacity and capability, orang akan put that trust on you. And bila orang put that trust, macam yang kita semua bincang dalam benda ni, it can only go straight up from there. You akan train lah macam I tak tipu. Sekarang sebenarnya I'm recovering from a sore throat sebab I banyak sangat cakap for the past week. I memang dah pening macam orang put deadline tau, HOD cakap I nak tiga orang intern macam ni, buy next week apa semua It's pressure lah, tapi macam when you're trying to learn That's what you're seeking for, you're seeking for those challenges So, yes, it's very important And yes, I dah berjaya secure a lot of interview dengan internship company Disebabkan the way I speak Uh, cumanya I macam uh, agak you know uh, a bit lenient pasal I punya intern I terlepas banyak interview dengan orang uh, tapi Alhamdulillah lah I masuk that company and it works okay uh, in fact dia orang offer I extension untuk kerja dekat situ tapi I cakap cannot because I nak balik Kelantan I miss my nasi kerabu <coughs> so there's that but serious if you want to be an intern Number one, dia memang akan tengok you punya soft skills. 
and second baru you punya technical skill sebab usually those who have enough time on their hands to actually improve their soft skills and also their communication skills also has enough time to revise the things that they learn in class right so uh, okay communication skill oh dan kalau untuk intern nanti belajarlah excel tu betul betul penting tau excel bercakap alright benda dalam kelas tu dia macam very little lah yang digunakan because in the real world you got system and everything your soft skills memang very important but kata uh, semua orang bagi quote kan daripada apa orang-orang terkemuka kan but kata uh, bekas presiden KDPA UD10 belajarlah excel dan belajarlah bercakap sesungguhnya anda akan mendapat internship yang bagus okay that's the word quote word of the day uh, that's all Thank you for the sharing. So sekarang ni adalah last question daripada kita punya participant which is daripada Harith Daniel. Dia tanya, what do you think of the communication skill that were presented by our politician? Okay, saya ulang. What do you think of the communication skill that were presented by our politician? Saya open question ni to any of the panelists yang berminat nak jawab dengan benda ni. Alright. Oh, uh, boleh, okay. boleh. Sila-sila. Uh, nak daripada parti mana? No, 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 no. No politics here, right? <laughs> <laughs> no politics here. Okay, uh, this is a very good question tau. Uh, sorry, saya banyak share experience semua kan, rather than talking on the technical speaking side. Tapi saya harap uh, audience hari ni faham. Yang confidence ni, dia datang in a lot of forms and speaking also comes in a variety of form. Contoh kan, ada orang confidence dia ialah loud, emotional, energetic confidence. Macam bila dia bercakap, dia very emotional. Dia macam, tuan-tuan dan puan-puan, hari ini saya terangkan kepada anda. Okay, this is Anwar Ibrahim, right? So, he's very emotional when he's speaking. Like, his charisma is that loud, one big character yang you akan immediately nampak. And then ada orang, dia punya calm, collected, cool confidence. Macam uh, Tun Mahathir. Like, you don't see Tun Mahathir convincing people, right? You don't see like, marilah kita, so, so, so. no. But bila dia bercakap, everyone knows that he's the smartest guy in the room. Like, memanglah kita akan mix. Macam Anwar Ibrahim pun, dia akan cakap not, uh, tona tinggi. And then bila dia bercakap tenang, dia rendah kan? Tapi that's one distinct characteristic lah. Like, very loud, uh, very energetic, very emotional. Meanwhile, Tun Mahathir pula, dia macam chill, calm, but very smart. So, Uh, the politician kita macam tu lah, macam maksudnya politician, tapi semua orang undi juga kan sebab these types of confidence ataupun aura yang diorang exudes uh, attracts different kind of people lah, macam kita vote, uh, kita suka juga Anwar Ibrahim, kita suka juga Mahathir tapi confidence yang diorang tunjuk tu differently, so anda semua pun macam tu jangan fikir yang uh, being a good public presenter ataupun being a very good public speaker It's all about being loud and being able to force people to you. Because for example, I will be quite frank, Shazran tak akan pernah jadi the same speaker as me. Because Shazran dia seorang yang cool, calm macam tu. Dia punya lawak pun tak berapa kelakar. Tapi macam kelakar lah juga kan. No, no, no. Dia boleh, you tanya dia. Betul kan? Dia pernah cakap dekat I. Dia takkan tiru I. Sebab dia macam tenang macam tu. Meanwhile, I, I dengan Ilman very emotional tau. Macam bila kita orang bagi speech kita orang nak apa-apa pun you guys kena setuju dengan kita orang macam tu. Alright, so you guys just follow the flow, bab kata Farah, follow the flow and follow the way you guys think is the best for you. Macam kalau you guys rasa yang you bukan emotional, you guys chill lah, just cakap macam biasa, macam Aina and Farah eh macam Farah emotional juga ah, macam kelakar-kelakar kan. Macam Aina dia macam ah uh, stewardess kan, dia macam satu 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 very clear. Alright, so there are different kind of speaking. There are different types of speeches as well. So just make sure that you know which one suits you best. Not everyone is born to be an emotional and also persuasive kind of speaker. Some of us <coughs> were born to be calm, collected, and be an informative punya speaker. Like we are good at explaining stuff. So just do your thing. Just explain stuff. No need to put too much emotion. Just Find your groove and then you'll be fine, all right? All right. 
Uh, Abi, that's a very good answer to be honest about question ni pun a bit, you know, uh, interesting. So jawab, tapi jawapan Abi sangat menjawab lah soalan ni dan elaboration yang lain pun okay. I think uh, that is the last question and tak ada dah question. So sekarang um, maybe panelist ada nak bagi anything, advice ataupun any, you know, last word kepada kita punya audience sebelum kita berpisah. Mungkin nak share what to do, what you you never need to do atau anything lah yang you dah pernah belajar daripada kesilapan lalu. Okay, uh, anyone boleh jawab ni eh? Uh, okay lah, saya try jawab dulu. Okay, uh, so to conclude apa yang uh, so panelis dah bagi tahu hari ni. So basically jangan pernah takutlah untuk jatuh. Pasal eh, as in macam jangan pernah takut untuk bercakap di hadapan orang. Sebab kadang-kadang kita akan rasa down, kita akan rasa macam eh aku ni macam tak cukup bagus ni nak cakap di hadapan orang. Oh mungkin kita akan make mistake bila kita uh, yelah even jadi MC pun kadang-kadang kita buat mistake uh, apa semua kan. Tapi daripada kita jatuh tu lah kita akan tahu apa benda yang kita salah and kita akan improvise in the future. So uh, keep learning and Uh, upgrade yourself lah maksudnya bukan setakat you belajar tapi you kena improve yourself cari satu X factor in yourself so uh, ini apa yang saya belajar lah masa kat sekolah dulu my uh, teacher dia selalu bagi tahu always cari X factor in yourself so macam yang Abel cakap tadi kan kalau macam politician dia ada different kind of politician yang cara dia orang bercakap tu berbeza sama juga dalam kita bercakap in public speaking kita punya the way of kita cakap dalam setiap event tu akan berbeza. Contoh, macam saya kalau nak uh, masa kempen pilihan raya. So, cara saya sampaikan my public speaking kat orang berbeza. Uh, tapi dalam kita dalam forum, berbeza. Dalam kelas bila kita present kita punya uh, slide pun ber, pun berbeza juga. So, kita kena pandai untuk adjust uh, well dengan situation lah. Kita kena adapt dengan situation and make sure apa yang paling penting adalah uh, pertama kena sentiasa tahu your content sebab a good public speaker dia bukan hanya boleh pandai bercakap tetapi juga uh, seorang yang berilmu. So bila kita tahu apa benda yang kita cakap so kita takkan sampaikan benda-benda yang macam berita palsu ke ataupun benda-benda yang out of kat orang. Sebab penting sebab bila kita bercakap dengan orang, orang akan persuade it uh, by us. So kalau kita bagi tahu benda yang salah, so salahlah benda pemahaman orang and dia akan berjangkit-jangkit macam wabak coronavirus. So, make sure sampaikan benda yang betul pada orang and paling penting enjoy. Macam uh, hari ni saya nampak saudara Hakimi paling energetik kan dalam kita punya session hari ni kan. Dia bahan orang je kerja je. So, itu cara untuk kita gain confidence. Ah, uh, So, kalau kita dah gain confidence tu, so kita boleh jadikan situation tu tak hamba and itulah cara untuk kita improve kita punya public speaking. So, I wish all the best to all of you. Thank you. Alright, thank you Iman. So, organizer request untuk semua panelis bagi ucapan penutup untuk kita punya audience. So, maybe kita akan start dengan Aina and then Farah, lepas tu Shazran and lastly, Hakimi. Uh, okay, so I'll go first as organizer request. So, as for me, my last advice to everyone. When the opportunity comes for you to speak or for you to public speak or jadi an MC, don't be afraid. Take the opportunity as a challenge and just get out of your comfort zone. Because if you do not experience it, if you do not learn from the mistakes, then you'll never grow. I've read a quote, tak adalah quote, tapi adalah orang rakyat-rakyat kita yang post. Okay, learn how to rest, not learn how to stop. So if you make a mistake, don't worry, don't stop. It's okay to break down for a while. And then from there, you move on because it's normal to be sad for a while because we're all humans. But then again, go out of your comfort zone. Become a butterfly, guys. Um, I think that's all for me. I wish you guys all the best. If you have anything, boleh sentiasa PM saya. And good luck. Thank you for coming tonight. Okay, Farah boleh continue. Tak apa. Alright. Sorry, ingatkan kena dijemput. Eh, Cik. <laughs> okay. 
Jadi, uh, one one advice that I would say is to lah, uh, never be afraid to take uh, any challenges because um, apa apa benda yang comes in your way that is a learning, it's a learning process lah. So how do you know you tak reti apa public speaking until you try? Macam mana you tak tahu lagi you pandai ke tak debate? Tapi you tak selagi you tak try, okay? Does my ayah make sense? I don't know lah. But <laughs> but anything you just have to take everything as a challenge. Masya Aina cakap tadi. And then never be afraid to do that. And then um but bila you dah dapat, macam <coughs> mana bila you dah dapat the opportunity, uh, you dah, dah dah tahu uh, apa yang you kena buat semua tu. Um, you can practice on it. Channel you not practice, you can ask your seniors. Macam tadi Shazan ada sebut juga, uh, communicate with your seniors. So if you want to ask uh, any of our panelists, malah ni, rasa everyone is very open to give uh, suggestions or maybe op- uh, macam ni, bagi tips ke macam ni nak uh, improve lagi ke after this. And then uh, you should also practice in like various ways lah. You boleh dengar TED Talks and semua tu kan. Jadi uh, apa-apa yang benda yang datang kat you, you are major. You jangan cakap no. So bila you dah rapat tu, you cakap macam oh, because everything happens for a reason kan. So macam kenapa uh, you diberi that opportunity? Kenapa kenapa you diberi opportunity tu untuk represent uh, Uniten or represent your club to do anything kan? It must has a reason kan. Jadi macam towards the end tu benda tu akan benefit kepada you. But in that you either you take it in a positive way or a negative way. If you take it in a positive way, yes, dia akan bagi benefit kat you in terms of you punya um, connection with people, you dah, you buat public speaking and then at the same time, tiba-tiba ada datuk dengarkan. Lepas tu tiba-tiba datuk tu nak you jadi uh, uh, spokesperson untuk dia ke. So, daripada situ dia dah boleh. And then you boleh dapat confidence. So, that is in a positive way lah. But in a negative way, maybe you can cakap, Oh, benda ni tak boleh. I'm afraid to talk in front of people and blah, 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 semua tu. Um, so, everything yang benda yang negative thoughts in your mind, change it into positive. Sebab apa-apa benda, you have, to remind, you have to remind yourself that it happens for a reason and it's a challenge for you guys lah. So, I would like to also wish everyone all the best and never believe, never rasa macam you are not good enough to talk. Because everyone has the ability to talk. But India yang macam Ilman kata, we have to find that one X factor, that spark inside you, yang apa yang you already buat. And daripada situ, you polish that that skill that you have and then you improve lagi in the future. That's all. Thank you. Alright. So, next, kita akan invite Shazran pula. Uh, so, kalau boleh, keep it short, okay? Sebab kita pun dah melebihi masa ni, masa telah mencemburui. Alright. So, Shazran, silakan. Okay. So, to conclude, semua bagi quote, saya tak bagi lagi. So, uh, I would like to pick one quote from Elon Musk, uh, the billionaire of uh, USA. It, uh, dia cakap, a great leap forward often requires two steps back. Meaning that, if we want to advance in our life, if we want to improve ourselves, never afraid to fall down. Kita kena sentiasa bersedia untuk kegagalan. So, first of all, be confident, be a believer, improve yourself and nothing is impossible in your life. You can achieve anything that you want if you believe in your, yourself because you will never walk alone. Thank you. Okay, thank you Shazran. So sekarang kita beralih kepada panelis terakhir kita. Abel, dipersilakan. Okay, terima kasih Nisa kerana memberi saya peluang bukan saja untuk membuka kata saya yang first berbicara dekat sini tapi juga penutup bagi sesi kita ni lah I think it was very eventful. Alright so uh, my last words is that I really truly believe that the most beautiful thing that you can wear on yourself is not makeup, it's not pretty clothes, it's not a slim figure but it's confidence. You know, you've heard about the advert dalam radio tu kan? Anda tahu rahsia perempuan cantik? Perempuan yang cantik ialah perempuan yang yakin dengan diri dia, yakin dengan penampilan dia and those things, right? And those things are true. The most beautiful thing that you can wear on yourself, your body, is confidence. And confidence starts by taking actions as they have already mentioned before. So do that, you know? Uh, and don't give up. As long as you keep on going, you keep on getting better. And as you get better, you will gain more confidence. And when you gain those confidence, that's when you know that you have already made it and that you have already succeeded. And from there, just like I said before, there's only one way up. 
which is only to get better. That's all from me. Thank you. Back to you. All right. Thank you, semua panelists, for this kind word and hopes, tips about the audience kita. So after this, we are going to have photography session. But before that, uh, I would like to invite wakil daripada organizer untuk beri sepatah dua kata. So I think I will invite Sofia Adrina Husna untuk beri sedikit kata-kata. Um, I don't really have much to say, but I would like to thank you for all the panelists. Eh, by the way, thank you, Nisa. Um, nak cakap terima kasih to all panelists about sudi luangkan masa and to to share kan about korang punya experience and semua. And kalau korang nak tahu, ramai uh, kita orang dah buat buka skoran yang tadi. Kalau nak tahu, ramai ramai orang minta for part two sebab dia orang kata dia orang enjoy sangat korang cakap. So maybe lah kalau ada rezeki, we'll be doing like another talk tapi like, like specific lah apa yang kita nak, apa punya topik kan. So tu je lah, just nak cakap thank you and sebenarnya ramai gila enjoy this talk.